the council meeting of September 12th to order. Will everybody please rise. During this moment of silence, let's remember all the men and women who lost their lives 10 years ago on 9-11 in the horrific attack on our country and for the families and loved ones they left behind. Also, let's remember Councilman Lutz's mother who passed away uh, a week ago and for all the people who lost, who passed away over the last month. Oh, that's not as great. Please salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Individual with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Fields, you want to do roll call, please? Mr. Love? Here. Colin? Here. Ms. Trinnell? Here. Ms. Rodriguez? Mr. Musi? Mr. Sabatini? Here. Mr. DiGiuseppe. Here. Just uh, for counsel and everybody else, Councilman Musi is still dealing with a medical problem and is having uh, some difficulty making the meetings. Uh, but he is, keep him in your prayers and hopefully he gets better soon. The other thing before we get started, there's been. Uh, issues with the Italian day and do up in the park the Italian day as everybody knows was canceled yesterday due to flooding not rain uh, the river is still coming up a lot our emergency management coordinator mr. Winslow has been keeping an eye on this and monitoring all the tides and uh, we're still on the, it's going to take place this Saturday it's going to be a combined do up and Italian day. Italian day is going to start at noon and end around 5, 5.30 instead of 8 o'clock. And Italian, uh, the do up will start around 5.36 and end probably around 10, 10.30. Uh, parking will all be available down at the Lennox Corporation across from Caesars Restaurant on Rackler Street. Everybody knows where the old Dial building is. Uh, there will be shuttle buses like we always had in the past providing shuttle to and from uh, Lions Park. If things change and we won't be able to air this, we you can keep monitoring our channel for updates. But if things change, I think, Merle, you're saying Wednesday you want to wait till? Or I think we should make a decision by Wednesday, Thursday at noon. If we're going to move the entire event to the Lennox parking lot, but we still need to get permission from Lennox to do that. Right now, we only have permission for us to use it for parking. Uh, the manager has been in contact with people from Lennox today and the owner of the property to see if it'll work. But don't forget, you're going to have Italian Day, you're going to have the Craft Festival from Mill Street, and you're also going to have the do up. Uh, It'll work. The police chief and the fire chief and Merle and several members of all the committees. We had an emergency meeting last night here that lasted a few hours. The Lions Club, the mayor was in attendance. We feel that traffic is going to be no problem to handle because most of the people are going to be busing from Lennox. A lot of the people from Bristol will probably just be walking down at the park. So a lot of things are going into making this event or all these events take place on Saturday. Right now the weather looks fine. It's going to be cool. We're in contact. I know a lot of people are talking about the mosquitoes, how bad they are. We're in contact with the county to try to do some spraying just in case. But the weather's supposed to be pretty cool, which I think will help. So stay tuned to the channel for updates. We're going to try to run an ad in the carrier on either Friday or Sunday morning once this decision has been made. So it's not the rain, it's it's the water that's coming up over the wharf and that's flooding, still flooding the parking lot, which is the issue. Did I miss anything? Friday's paper, 
on Sundays. <laughs> Thursday or Friday's paper. Okay. Uh, this time I'm going to open up public participation. Anybody on this side of the room would like to speak, please state your name for a record. Good evening, Greg Pezza. Um, just a very, very brief question this evening. Uh, I was down at the, um, I was down on Mill Street on Saturday at the Mill Street Run, and I noticed uh, in the back that there's a lot of activity that's starting to take place at the uh, Public Works project. And I have just a few basic questions uh, pertaining to the project itself. And that is, uh, if and when work gets started. Um, I'm wondering if you could help me understand and perhaps help people of Bristol understand the process that goes into keeping check on the specifications, that keeping check on the fact that they're meeting, that the people building the building are meeting the specifications, that we're staying within the project's budget, and that we're not going to be surprised by what we see when, uh, you know, when things are all finished. I wonder if you could take me through that, that process. Okay, first, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. the project is started. There is project meetings every second Tuesday, Jim? Wednesday. Wednesday at 10 a.m. in Borough Hall. There is an architect that is overseeing the construction end of it, and the borough engineers are overseeing the site work of the project. So by overseeing it, they, they, are, they are basically employees they are of the on, borough? Well, they're on-site working for an hourly rate. Okay. The engineers will work more in the beginning because it's more site work and land development. And as once that phase is finished, which is pretty close now, because they already start digging for footings for the building, then the architect will then perform her duties of overseeing the project. That is on the agenda tonight for approval to approve her uh, salary and everything to be out there. As far as being on budget right now, the project, the, our proposed amend budget is we have the engineering and architectural fees in the budget. Uh, we have the building price in the budget, and we're hoping that if everything goes right, we'll have $62,793 left over in this capital improvement budget. We also did some value engineering. Uh, we went through Monday night. I know some people weren't here. And there's a cost savings that's coming back to the borough in the amount of $49,580, meaning there were some walls between some of the bays that we felt we didn't need uh, this foundation in one area. The storage bins seemed pretty good when they started to dig, so we eliminated some of the piers underneath of there. And there was a whole list that the council received in their packets of what each item pertained. But right now the job is going good. They did hit, like I said last week, in the far right hand corner apparently years ago when the borough did a road program before our time, they must have allowed them to dump all the millings from the roads back into this corner behind this, where the salt shed was. When they removed all the millings and they started to dig for a retention basin, they hit trash again, tires and wood, and just like we did before. So that is being removed on a day rate, and I think we may have spent in the area ten thousand in the area about ten thousand dollars so far to clean it up. So everything looks like it's going good. Uh, I don't foresee once we're out of the ground. I don't foresee any issues major with the building because it's the plan. So uh, all the problems we feel we would run into is during the foundation process, and that's already been done. If we didn't hit this area of debris, we probably wouldn't have any additional costs right now moving forward. And just, just to be clear, um, so the architect and the engineer that you were just referencing, they are working on council's behalf, not on the behalf of the developers. Uh, there are project managers. Okay. Like when they were pouring the footings, they took a sample of cement out of every truck. That cement will be tested for the strength to make sure everything was done properly. Uh, anything that goes, they're testing the compaction. Just so you know, when they were putting in these, they call them CMUs, this machine goes down in the ground and, it, and the way it's done, it forces itself through the 
the dirt. And then all of a sudden you would see like a hollow spot and it may drop 15 feet. And everything's done computerized. Every hole is numbered and marked. Once they hit resistance of five feet and that drill doesn't want to go anymore, they know from what the computer's telling them it's strong enough to support a foundation. At that time they release cement through the tube and as the, tubes, the tube is coming out, it's filling the hole with grout, which is cement. And they put in, I don't know, about 200 of them around the floor inside the, the perimeter and inside the floor of the building. So it was really something to see uh, get done, but everything seems to be going good. And you're, and you're voting tonight on what the salary of the architect and the engineer will be in the Last time when we, all the projects we did, we hired a project manager, which was the architect over on a, on a fixed rate. But we felt this time that on an hourly rate, it's probably going to benefit the borough because during the project, she may put more hours in the beginning, less hours as the project's going along. And she doesn't have to sit there every day to watch them lay cinder block. She come and check on things. And we feel that it's probably going to save the borough a considerable amount of money by doing it hourly. And there's a $6,000 fee we cannot exceed that. That's what I was going to ask you. Was gonna, if things, a, yeah, okay. So if she works out there 200 hours, she's only going to get paid for uh, 60 hours. Okay. okay. Those are my questions. I appreciate your time. Thank you. You're welcome. My name is Pat McLaughlin. Uh, I live on 3rd Avenue in Bristol. I want to thank Mr. Dillon for his very prompt um, promptness in getting uh, men out to 804 3rd Avenue. And uh, they did a beautiful job. And thank you so much, Mr. Dillon. I know you're always getting, it's about time somebody thanks you. And uh, I, have a, I have a question. There is a pharmacy on 13. I said, I didn't even know you were here. He says, we're not allowed to put a sign up. I said, you're not allowed to put a sign up? He says, no. I said, without a sign, how's anybody going to know you're, you're in off of 13 by Dion's and you, you can't put a sign up? Is there any reason for that? I don't even know, is he allowed to be there? <laughs> My understanding is that uh, they did receive zoning approval, so they're entitled to a sign, but they do have to apply for a sign. So maybe they didn't maybe apply. Maybe they don't know that. I think they're, in, uh, they're, they're Indians, and they may not be aware of this, but I will make them aware that they have to apply for the sign. They have, they have to go to the zoning? No, they just come in and apply to the zoning officer, and if the, if the sign complies, they can get it. But they do have to apply for a sign, but I'm pretty sure that the pharmacy is legal. It's a very nice family pharmacy, and people don't know Send that they're Send them a letter. We'll have a letter sent to them, tell them what the process it's, is for a sign. Yeah, it's right there. I think it's 5th Avenue. I think Dion's is 6th Avenue. This is, this is in between 5th and 6th. And uh, another thing is we've been having a problem with 4th Avenue again. The 4th Avenue... Oh. Carlot, the, what the heck is, the, I don't know what name they go by, but that Carlot that's there on 13, Green and 4th Avenue, he's making it very difficult for people to come up 4th Avenue to get on to Green Street to come around, my, we all park in the alley behind 3rd Avenue and 4th Avenue. And mostly, I think there's only two families on, on, um, that, that have to go down that alley that does not have uh, a parking uh, spot. So they give you a hard time. They're, they're, they're just being very ignorant. Uh, he's, he, he answers you back when you say something to him, like, uh, who do you think you are? So I think somebody really has to do something about him. Well, I seen the report where there was a car hit. Not too long ago. Was yes, there. it was the other night. As a matter of fact, I was coming from my sister's. And uh, I had just got in 
and they said that there was, and I came up 4th Avenue, and they said that uh, there was an accident there right before I had come up. Well, the guy moved the truck. There's a lot of times that we'll go up that way, and we won't move, blow the horn until he comes out and, and moves whatever, if it's a tow truck or, but this kid, he was like, I guess he didn't want to make any waves. There's a lot of people that don't. But you know what they say, the squeaky wheel gets things done, so. Um. I know, Pat, we're aware, of, we've been aware of the problem. It's very frustrating for us to sit here and keep telling you the same thing, that we know what's going on, but you don't see anything getting done. I know. It's the, well, process, I the process really does not benefit us. It benefits, you know, the people out there that are causing the problem, I'll be honest with you. Right, right. So, uh, I know the manager is aware of it. We're trying to do whatever we can, and we'll just chief stay, you know, I know send the chief guys. of police is doing whatever he can, but, you know, after that accident, he moved that truck before the police got there. So it's hearsay. Right. He, 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 is, he is one step ahead of the, the police force. Oh, I know. So, uh, you know, it... It's not good. We step up patrols around there. Sure. We had officers out there today, and they also knocked on some doors to try and speak to some of the neighbors who were involved. Uh, plus, I also discussed some issues with Sally today, too. So. Cool. Uh, we are aware of it. I mean, you could. Yeah, I, I spoke to the I spoke to the chief, and he told me that. But I figured, you know, let's get it out there. Let people know what's going on. Okay. It, it can't be just one person all the time. I know. Doing all the complaining. Because then they say, oh boy, here she comes. <laughs> but, you know. Well, I appreciate it. You have to do it. Thank you. And thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else on this side of the room would like to speak on anything? Anybody on this side of the room would like to speak on anything? Okay. This time that ends public participation. Okay, Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes of August 8th and September 6th to accept the Treasurer's report for July, to accept the Police and DJ's report for August, to accept the Fire Chief, Chief's report for August, to accept the Borough Inspector's report for August, to accept HARB report for July 25th and August 29th, and to accept, accept the Zoning Hearing Board report for August. Do I have a second? Second by Ms. Trinnell. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Number three. I'd like to make a motion to adopt the ordinance permitting 10-minute parking at certain locations on Mill Street. Do I have a second? Second by Mrs. Collin. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? What'd you say, Jim? Aye. Oh, okay. Number four. I have a second. Mrs. Collin, questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Number five. I have a second. Second by Mr. Sabatini. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Mr. President, I'd like to make a resolution approving 2012 minimum municipality obligation for police pension fund. Second. 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 I have a second. Second by Ms. Trinnell. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> Number seven. Second. Second by Ms. Collin. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Number eight. Mr. President, I'd like to adopt the resolution to authorize installing a stop sign on Gordon Street at Inland Street for a trial period of 90 days. I have a second. Second by Mr. Polensky. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Number nine. 
I'd like to make a motion to approve Bristol Borough's sponsorship of the annual Mill Street Run. I have a second. Second by Mr. Sabatini. Any questions or comments? I'd just like to comment uh, that it's already done. It was done, obviously, last Saturday, but we had made the motion on the floor or to put it on the agenda, but we never voted on it, so this just kind of makes it official. Any other comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Number 10. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to approve the cooperation agreement with uh, the Redevelopment Authority regarding blighted properties. I have a second. Second by Mr. Sabatini. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? Number 11. I have a second. Second by Ms. Collin. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Number 12. Second. Second by Mr. Sabatini. Any questions or comments? Mr. Chairman. Um, we approved the contract for the uh, house and for house and the design, I guess earlier in the year. Around 50, that was to do was that was for the architectural fees. Okay. This is to oversee the project now, Jimmy. So Make who, sure. Who, who drew the Who's, who drew the specs? The architect or the engineer? Well, they're both of them. The architect drew the building. The engineer did the site work. So when we have when we, when we have a meeting, you have the architect and engineer both there. Correct. Oh, bam, both of them by the hour. Isn't this a duplication of of services? No. Can't the engineer? I the mean, engineer is not he an knows architect. All the specs. He knows how the building should be built. What materials should be used? It has nothing to do with the building. He his specs that he did was all the site work, the elevations, dealing with the flood planes, dealing with DEP, all that stuff. Her job was to design the building for construction. So you have two separate, and that's what I said in the beginning, you're going to have more engineering in the beginning, less at the end, because once the building's starting to get built, you don't need the engineer. It just seems like a duplication to me. I'm not so sure we need Well, I think I just explained. You got an engineer and you got an architect. They're okay. two different people. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. No. Number 13. I have a second. Second by Ms. Collin. Questions or comments? Just so everybody knows, we sat here, we went through this building, and I think we did a great job by cutting $50,000 out of this building, not adding it to the building. And it, now that we ran into some debris and stuff, it's going to help. So I think that uh, a lot of work went into making these decisions. So I appreciate everybody that helped on that committee. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Number 14. I have a second by Mr. Sabatini. Any questions or comments? Mr. Chairman, is the, uh, is the manager still going to get three quotes for everything over $4,000? It's not out. We can't. It's a change order. It's a change, change order. It's not going, going out to bid. We're not going out for new contracts. It's a change of this contract. You not can't. Something new. It's you just a change. But you're still buying something. That's no. more money. If you're the contractor on the job and you come to us and you say, we have a change order, we hit this debris in the ground, we can't bring another contractor in. He's on site with his equipment. The change order is part of the original contract, whether it's a deduct or whether it's an ad. So any any change order is is we're at the mercy of RNS construction. 
anytime you do it, every job that you do. If you're doing the roads in town and they run into an area that needs to be re, uh, re dug out and redone, you can't say, wait a minute, we're going to go out to bid. He's got the contract. I understand the time restraints, so you, you can't go out to bid, but you can certainly get other prices. You can't. Yeah. Could you get somebody else to come in and do a little piece of it? Well, let, let's suppose that you were putting, I will use this, a window air conditioner. You aren't going to put it in, all of a sudden you're putting it in. I know you're going to have central air. I'm just using this as an example. And you want to spend a thousand bucks on it. You, I mean, the contractor says, okay, I'll get you one for two thousand. But you can, if you were going to put a window air conditioner in after the job was done, then you can bring whoever you want in. During this contract, you have to deal with the contractor on site because let's say it's a foundation, they hit something and you're digging and they say, we got a problem here. And I say, okay, we're going to bring in Mr. Lutz's firm to fix it. And the building, no, the building fine. cracks. That's fine. Now we have an issue, so... Those, those things, you're going to get those, too. Right, and, and that's and what we're saying. We don't meet, we don't meet but, but once a month. And every project so far, we gave the manager authorization to do these change orders, and then we would ratify them at our regular council meeting. If the change order came in, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000, we had a major problem, we need to call an emergency meeting then. Okay. I just want to say, and I... And, I I think one, it's one, a one more thing. Good. We're, we're going to be notified of all the change orders, maybe like Just weekly like or biweekly. Every month you'll be in your packet. Okay. Council's going to ratify. I, I think it's a good question you brought up. The, the contract set up that if the contractor wants any change, whether it's an additional time or additional monies, he's got to come to us and really to our engineer first and negotiate it. And if we don't agree to it, he doesn't get it. And let's say for some reason we can't come to an agreement. There is a possibility we can bring somebody else in to do it. The problem is when you're bringing a contractor in for a small piece, they have to mobilize. I mean, it's just, it's not worth it. But the point is we have some control over this. He can't do it, and then after he does it, come in and say, oh, three months ago I did this extra, I want money for it. He has to come to us ahead of time. And that's why we have the, the biweekly meetings. Right. And, and oh, yeah, the fact. Yeah. And all, right. And also, Mr. Lutz, there's quantities and different factors in the contract that are built in. So if they wanted to haul debris out, they can't say, we want $20,000. There's a number of, say, $27 a cubic yard that for hauling. There's a number in there for pieces of machinery. There's a number in there for uh, truck drivers and trucking. And so they just can't come back and say, pick a number out of the sky and say, we want X amount of dollars. This contract is written very uh, tight where they, they have to follow the guidelines of the contract. So if he needs two trucks, he needs to justify the trucks, and he needs to justify what he's taken out, and that's where the engineer is on site, counting the trucks and where the truck load should be going. Okay. Okay, Mr. Sabatini. Yes, Mr. President, I can make a comment to, to Mr. Lutz. Uh, never have I been on the, in all the years of construction, have I been on a job that hasn't been changed orders. But this is the first time in 14 years sitting up here that Bristol Barrow has done a job where we're getting a change order in our favor before this has even started. Uh, $50, $50, $50. That's a credit to this council, manager, and everybody in the office. And I think that speaks for itself. So, Thank you. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Number 15. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to approve the extension of the borough inspector's contract for one year with the same terms and conditions. I have a second. Second by Ms. Trinnell. Questions or comments? Everybody received John's packet. Jimmy, you weren't here Monday, but we discussed it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 
Should we hold up on 16? I think we should do 16. Let's Better get 16, 16 out of the way <laughs> so somebody doesn't pass out. Yeah, out of here tonight. Okay. <laughs> I would like to make a motion to hire Stephen Colella as a part-time police officer. Second by Mrs. Collin. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Congratulations. Thank you. After we're done, you can come up if you want to take some pictures of your mom and the chief or whoever. Let's get him in his uniform. We got a camera. Let's get him in his uniform. <laughs> All right, number 17. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to hire William Frank and Amanda Carr Plabani as substitute school crossing guards. Second. Second by Mr. Polensky. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, again, stay tuned to the TV channel for the doo-wop Italian day and the craft show and Merle will be making a decision along with the manager and myself by Wednesday or Thursday at the latest. I get a motion to adjourn? I move.